Hello everybody, welcome to a very special edition of the Elona tutorial series. Today is going to be a video all about comments and questions that people have left, and corrections to either incomplete or false information that I might have spread in previous videos. Lots of people have come along and left a lot of really helpful comments on all of my videos, so I want to give all of these people shoutouts, give them credit, and show how they are making the tutorial series better than it was before. The first comment I want to address is by a user named MacMush, MacMush, Mush, something like that. This person says, classes actually have special feats added in Elona Plus. Now, when I started these videos, I was not even playing Elona Plus, or I was playing a very early version of it, but this is true. Each class now has a unique feat. For example, warriors have the Onslaught feat, which gives them a chance of performing an extra attack in combat. Wizards have Circulation Magic, which reduces the amount of mana that they use by 10%. Now, I don't believe you find these in your actual feat list. I have a warrior that I made in a newer version of Elona Plus, and I don't see Onslaught listed anywhere in her feat list. So I advise you to just look at the wiki if you want to know what all of those are. I believe they are mostly passive attributes that you'll gain, but look into those when you're deciding what class to make next. Next, I would like to address these comments by Brandon Atwood and Nawia. Really, several people have been telling me that there's yet another new version of Elona called Elona Plus Custom. And whoever is developing Elona Custom, or maybe it's maybe it's supposed to be Elona Plus Custom, they are apparently making great strides in translating a lot of the untranslated elements from Elona Plus, as well as giving you extra options on pet AI and all kinds of other things that just generally make the game better to play. From what I understand, this is a patch added to Elona Plus, not vanilla Elona. So you need Plus first, and then you will install Custom on top of that. And I will give a link to the Elona Plus Custom page on the wiki, because I hear it's just full of quality of life improvements. I have not yet played it myself, but I will get around to that. Next up, a comment from the Watcher from Afar, CP49. This is related to character creation. Your specialized skill actually makes you start with 10 levels in that skill. Pickpocket and Greater Evasion can only be gotten by entering the Thief and Mage Guild, but you can choose one of them during that screen, giving you a bit more freedom in that department. So this basically indicates that your starting skills are probably a little more important than I might have indicated in the Part Zero tutorial. And of course, some skills are either very difficult or even impossible to acquire without special means like joining the Thief Guild or the Mage Guild. Now, TactWZ tells me you can in fact stop your allies from drinking out of the well. If I hit I and interact with my fallen soldier here, let's hit talk. Well, apparently there is a way to do this, but I can't find it. What's Evo chat? Oh god. No, I don't want this. Uh-oh. Oh, what have I done to my fallen soldier? Okay, that's better. Do I need to download a newer version of Elona Plus? Did this happen again? Well, I am told that you can talk to your allies and ask them not to eat food off the ground, but I am having a hard time finding out how that's done. I don't know if this can be chalked up to version differences, or if I am just failing to navigate these menus. But I think I'm gonna have to ask for one more person to clear things up in the comments on how this is done exactly. Now here's a nice piece of advice I got from Dungeon of Pain. Whenever you encounter a door in a dungeon that you can't quite open, maybe it's locked or stuck for any reason, you can press B and bash the door. And sometimes that makes it easier to open doors. It can still take a few tries, but it also destroys the door when you do that. Here's a question that was posted by Aethura that was answered by Bill Johnson, but I figured I would mention it here anyway. Any chance you can explain what the orange bar under the health bar is? It only increases while in combat and I have no idea what it does. 
Well, as Bill Johnson said, that is known as your gauge, and that's a new feature in Elona Plus. Something that I wasn't super experienced with, but as he says, it's similar to a limit break if you ever played the Final Fantasy games. It builds up and builds up throughout combat, and when it reaches 100%, you gain the ability to do certain special moves. And that's going to vary from character to character, but again, I advise having a look through the wiki, because that will help you figure out exactly what all of those abilities are. You can see I hit 100%, and if I press A to open up my little ability menu here, I can use Gauge Release. So now that should power up my next attack and make it super powerful. Let me try it out on this kobold and see what happens. Mm, that didn't seem all that different. Let's try it on this snail. Well, I'm still not too clear on the details of how it works. I just know that certain special abilities require your gauge to be at a certain percentage in order to be usable. Another person, um, Lukas Dudek, had a helpful tip here. You'll notice that when you kill monsters you sometimes get bones, hearts, eyes, etc. And I mentioned in one video that these can be sold for money. But I went to sell them and they were only worth one gold piece. So it made me look a bit silly. But as it turns out, once you identify all of those body parts for the first time, I think it's just any type of body part. Like once you identify a bone, then I think all bones will be identified. I might be wrong about that. But once you identify them, then they're worth a lot more. See, now that I've identified it, the bone is worth 92 gold pieces. And as a little added tip, there is a skill you can learn called anatomy, which increases the odds that parts like that will be dropped from monsters as well as that useful corpse meat. And once you've learned that skill, it's leveled up just by killing more monsters, I believe. And another helpful tip is that if you have a ranch and you kill monsters in the ranch, they are much more likely to drop those body parts than a monster that you kill in the wild or in a dungeon. I just killed one of my Black Widows and in fact I got two pieces of meat from it in addition to a skin, which I don't think a Black Widow actually has, but it's something I can sell anyway. Here's a good tip from the real Yoshao. Suppose you've taken some kind of delivery quest to Durfee and you have no idea where to find your quest target. Well, you can visit the informer in their adventurer's guild and ask them, where is this person? Since there are no guards to ask in Durfee, this is your option here. It costs you 100 gold, but this is one person who can tell you in Durfee. Walk to the east for a while and I'll find this citizen. They might not be the most helpful person since they're always in the southwest corner of the city. But look, now I found him. And I was able to deliver the item to him. Pikmin1211 pointed out some cool things about the ranch that I didn't know about before. For example, if you ever find one of these items called a big brush, they sort of randomly appear in dungeons and places like that. You can use that on the animals in your ranch. So for example, this ice hound that I have here, if I'm holding the brush, I press A and pick the rubbing action here. Let's say I rub this ice hound. Let's rub this red wasp. Rub this spider. Well, the wiki tells me that if you brush the animals in your ranch, it will tell you special things about them, like whether they have a higher or lower chance of producing milk or eggs or if you would get more meat from them if you killed them. I don't know why that's not happening here. Maybe I just haven't done it enough. Also, I tried to eat milk in a previous video, but I didn't try to drink it. So let's drink some milk of Hand of the Chaos. I suppose that serves as a food item and makes you more full. That's my best guess. You can also use the milk to produce butter, cheese, and yogurt. That's done with an item called a pot for fusion. I have not found one of these in my game, and the wiki doesn't say how one of these is acquired. Maybe they're bought from shopkeepers in town. If anybody knows where they are found, please leave a comment and let me know. If I had one, I would try to demonstrate making butter and cheese and all that. Now, Lily Black pointed out a way to make money that I can't believe I neglected to mention in one of my tutorials. So, buy some alcohol from an innkeeper, or just find some, 
get some alcohol any way you can, and give that to any NPC. Hit I to interact with them. Choose give, and give them something alcoholic. Almost always the NPC will immediately drink the alcohol you gave them and immediately get drunk. Sometimes they wait a turn or two before they actually do it. But then you talk to them again, and you will now have a dialogue option interested in a little tale tonight. Select that. And you will whore yourself out to the NPC. Now this may get cut short if you are too tired to continue with it, or if you get sick in the middle of it, or if they get sick from the alcohol. But if you were successful, you will see these messages pop up that the NPC becomes insane, and they will put some money on the ground for you. I got about 1920 gold pieces. That will be higher the greater your charisma stat is. And doing this is also a way to raise your charisma over time. Now if they say something like, you are awesome, here, take this, then that's good, that means you're gonna get a good amount of money from them. If they say something else like, here, take this money, it's all I have, then you're only getting paid a partial amount of what you could really earn with your charisma stat. So you don't want to just go around and have sex with any random NPC that you like. The best ones to choose are adventurers, like the one I picked just now, or shopkeepers. Because when you go to buy something from a shopkeeper, you can actually see directly how much money they have in their inventory, and know whether or not they have enough money to pay for your body. This is something I've actually done quite a bit with this character, so I'm surprised I forgot to mention it. It does reduce your karma, so you don't want to do it all the time, and it is possible to get sick for a long time by doing this, so it is risky. But like I said in the character creation tutorial, gender doesn't play any kind of a role in this. You can be a male prostitute having sex with men and women, or a female prostitute also having sex with men and women. It's all up to you, really. Now, I want to give a big shout out slash thanks to Brandon Atwood, who posted a lot of really helpful clarifications on the way gods and faith work. I'm not going to read out his entire post, but I strongly advise you to either, uh, you know, pause this video and look at the comment, or go back to that video on gods and read it there. Plus, then you can give him a thumbs up for it. The big thing I was wondering about is the stat gain that you apparently get from worshipping your god. Apparently those stats are not gained through prayer at specific times, but are rather gained sort of consistently as you gain faith. So as you worship your god and stay in their favor and make sacrifices to them, you will slowly gain more and more attribute bonuses. They sort of trickle in rather than all show up at once. I had a request from AngryBarf76, pretty great username by the way, <laughs> that if I'm doing a Q&A video like this one that I'm doing right now, that I would cover how wishing works. So here's how that works, basically. There are rare circumstances where you can be prompted to make a wish. It's a very advanced spell that you can cast. My fairy wizard character knows the spell, but it would cost 537 mana to use it once, which he doesn't even have, and it would only have a 1% chance of success. That's how intense it is, how overpowered it is. There are some ways you may be prompted to make a wish, like if you find a rod of wishing, but a more common way that people find them is by drinking out of wells. I mentioned in one of the first tutorials that you generally don't want to drink out of wells because they can poison you and make other terrible things happen to you, but if you want to take the gamble, they also have the chance of granting you a wish, which is always extremely helpful and always welcome. So like I said, your pets will often drink out of them by their own volition, but you can also choose to walk over to a well, press Q, and drink out of it. This well is dry. Now there is a holy well in the northeast corner of Noyle, which is supposed to be more likely to grant wishes than any typical well that you might run into. I just drank from the well and I lost uh, a point of learning, it looks like. 
So like I said, it's usually a bad thing to drink from the well, but wishes are generally worth it if you can make it happen. Now they are a rare enough event that I'm not going to sit here in the game and repeatedly drink out of wells until I get another wish to happen, but I can do my best to recreate what happens when you get a wish. Whenever you or one of your followers drink out of the well, you will see a text box similar to this one appear in the middle of the screen, and something in the message log will indicate that you've just been granted a wish, and it will ask you to type something in. So you would use your keyboard and actually type something in, like, I want a million dollars. I'm not really doing a wish here. But the thing about wishes is that you can type in just about anything in the game. I mean, you can wish for your skills to be higher, you can wish for money, you can wish for a god to appear before you, but whenever you're prompted for a wish, it's honestly a really good idea to look on the wiki at the list of recommended wishes that they have and find something that you could really want, because there are lots of really rare items that are nearly impossible to get outside of wishing. And the great thing about the wiki is you can look up any item and anything like that, and it will tell you how to make that item appear before you when you're prompted for a wish. It will tell you the exact thing that you need to type in in order to make that appear. Two things that I have wished for on this character are the Vindale Cloak and the Seven League Boots. So for example, if you wanted a Vindale Cloak, you would just type in Vindale, and it would make that item appear in front of you. The Vindale Cloak is great because it drastically reduces the rate at which you get ether disease when the ether wind is happening. So it's very helpful if you're a forgetful person like me and you get caught in the ether wind and forget to pay attention to what month it is. The Seven League Boots are also a good wish. The great thing about those is that they highly increase your traveling speed on the world map. So those make it very helpful to get around the world in shorter lengths of time, and they make it much easier to do those very valuable quests that go to and from Noyle. But there is a whole list of recommended wishes and helpful things that you might like to get from your first wish that's on the wiki. I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the video description. Now this one is a little beyond me, but Liquid Infirmity pointed out that when your magic device skill is high enough, you can use these special abilities called Draw Charge and Fill Charge, and these skills basically will destroy random rods that you find, and you can use the magical charge from those rods to recharge your spell books or other rods or other items. So that's helpful if you can get your magic device skill high enough. Now, Wyking, who generally leaves a lot of great comments on these videos, also taught me a really cool thing about spells. If you don't want to open your spell menu and navigate to your favorite spells every time you want to cast one of them, you can bind them to a hotkey. So for example, I use magic dart all the time, so if I don't want to open the menu to cast that, I can press 1 when I'm in the spell menu here, and now anytime I press the 1 key, I cast a magic dart. It's so convenient. I highly recommend anybody playing a magic character to do that. So I want to thank everybody for all the comments that they've left on these videos throughout the whole series. People seem to be finding them really helpful. Lots of people are watching and lots of people are commenting and I think that's all just fantastic. There's a chance that I might make another video like this one in the future if I continue to get a lot more comments. But I also want to address a question somewhat unrelated that somebody had on the channel. Juddy555 here said, is there any chance of you doing more Dwarf Fortress stuff? It's why I subscribed in the first place, and I'm always glad to see more Dwarf Fortress content in the world. Well, for a long time I was hesitant to get back into Dwarf Fortress. I wasn't really feeling it, I guess. And I wasn't too crazy about the short-lived Let's Play series that I put on the channel here. But people seem to find some enjoyment out of that. So I want to announce here a change that I would like to start doing on the channel. I don't know if this will have much effect on what I post on YouTube, but I would like to start doing 
weekly streaming sessions. Most likely I'll be doing these every Friday afternoon. That's about the only guaranteed time off that I have, so I'm going to say for sure streams every Friday. Unless any extenuating circumstances come up. You know, follow me on Twitter and I'll try to be more diligent about announcing if I'm going to do a stream or if I'm not going to do a stream. But for the meantime, I'm gonna say try to tune into my Twitch channel every Friday afternoon and I will be streaming Dwarf Fortress and probably some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, maybe some other roguelikes or roguelites that I happen to enjoy, or various other games that people have told me about. I'm going to make a separate video to talk about this too so that more people are aware, so that, you know, it's not just going out to the people who are watching the Ilona tutorials. But yeah, keep an eye out for those. I'm gonna try and stream for the first time Friday, September 15th in the coming week here. So everybody please show up, turn out for that. One of the first things I want to do is start a new Dwarf Fortress. Fortress. And it would be a lot of fun if people tune in to watch along with that. Anyway, I want to thank everybody once again for watching. I'm so happy that everybody is enjoying these tutorials and getting some use out of them, and that people are willing to clarify things that I am less certain or less knowledgeable about. So keep it up, and I'll catch you next time.